you positive heads out there thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the positive head podcast where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness which creates and animates all things now of course understanding this powerful truth is one thing Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life? Well, that's another. Which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week to help constantly remind you of what matters most. You are it. And I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. I'm the reflection and extension of you who will be here each Wednesday interviewing a different consciousness changemaker and on the other four weekdays, leading the way to ensure that your perspective is consistently expanded, your vibration is constantly elevated, and your heart is overflowing and full. And you guys have heard me say that if I ever run ads on this show, it will only be with a company that I fully support because I believe their intention is to make a positive difference in the world. Well, I'm pleased to announce that day has arrived and that this episode of the Positive Head podcast is being brought to you thanks to the support of Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash Positive Head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash Positive Head. Check it out. All right, all you positive heads, on this week's Pow Wow episode, I am grinning ear to ear with excitement because I have Preston Smiles here with me on the show. Preston is a motivational messenger whose mission is to empower, inspire, and ignite a multi-generational movement of radical growth. And when I heard him state that his creed is love will find a way and everything else uh, will find an excuse, I just knew I had to have this guy on my show. And uh, Preston, so happy to have you, my friend. Oh, oh. Yes, sir. <laughs> let's do it. I think let's that's the first intro like that I've received. So, you guys, that sets the tone for the episode. Just so you know what you're in for here. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. So, I like to start. I'm pretty predictable with my opening question and ending question. Uh, mm. You're in an elevator. Uh, the the woman next to you looks over, says, "What's your passion?" You got ten floors to answer. What do you say? Yeah, uh, my passion is 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 love. My passion is radical truth. My passion is uh, being the best versions of ourselves in this now moment, and stacking those moments on top of each other until we create a space where it's like a soul gasm, where where mm. where where. where, <laughs> where you know, we're smiling from the inside out and there is uh, an understanding that even if we don't like somebody, there's space for love. There's space for understanding. There's space for harmony, joy, peace, and mm. all that juiciness. Mm. Yes, I love that. Yeah, I instantly think of, do you know, uh, do you know Savan Bomar? I don't. Awesome name. Oh, uh, you, need, you need to meet Savan. You guys should connect. Uh, he is epic next level guy he says he calls it inner standing and so yes. as you were just saying that i'm like oh that, that i don't know you just popped in my head and um yeah so uh obviously makes a lot of sense why you're on the show definitely you know my favorite your your creed is beautiful my my favorite uh quote you know i've kind of like taken john lennon and then just modified it a little bit but you know love is the answer now What was the question? That is it, man. It's like, it's everything. And exploring that from every different angle possible. Um, And, you know, as far as everything, there's so much good stuff to talk about here. But I'd like to start, I always like a good story, first of all. So I'd Mm -hmm. love to hear your backstory and how you ended up, you know, doing this unique, amazing work that you're doing. Yeah, man. I'll, I'll do my best to just quickly go through and give you guys the cliff notes because it's a hell of a story. But uh, very young, I was placed in special education classes and um, 
you know, during that time, I made up a story about myself that I was dumb, that I was stupid, that I was less than, that I wasn't as smart as everyone else. And so I began unconsciously to seek acceptance and approval outside of myself. So I would bully the bullies. I would befriend the nerds. Um, I was very aggressive in sports and in the way that I, you know, styled myself and things of that nature, because I, I received approval from my parents and the world in that way. And mm. by the time I was 11 years old, I joined a gang, started smoking weed, um, wow. and really, um, you know, took a different turn. And uh, I remember being 15 years old and funny enough, well, not funny enough, but it's actually pretty genius. My dad caught me smoking when I, uh, when I was 11. And uh, instead of telling me I, I couldn't, he, he said, I want you to think about it for a few days. I want you to think about everybody who you know that does that and ask yourself, do you want their life? And, wow. Uh, wow. Which was That's some genius. wisdom right there. Yeah. Which yeah. Is wow. What a dad <laughs> to say to an 11 year old. Right. And so I'm sure. thinking I'm going to get, you know, punished and beat and all this other stuff. And he just has me think about it. And, mm. and, um, a couple days goes by and he sends you back down and he says, listen, I just want you to know that you're, you're a leader. And if everybody else is going left, but something in your heart says you need to go right, you are so powerful that you will do that without a doubt. And I'm not going to stop you from doing anything. I know you're going to be a little boy. I just ask that you be that leader that I know you are. And he mm. spoke into me right now. My dad and I have had major issues, including, you know, navigating some drug, big drug stuff and arrest and mm. a whole nother world um, that I've been through in this lifetime. However, that was one of the most amazing moments of my life because it set me up for uh, four years later. I'm 15 and a half. My best friend, Scott, uh, and I, and this kid, Rudy used to go out and drink and, um, and like, uh, just do dumb teenager stuff. And, uh, um, wow. I'm very this familiar. <laughs> yes. Yes. We used to do this thing called runouts where we would go in a liquor store and pretend like we were adults, grab as mm. much alcohol as possible and then run out before getting we hit by something or shot basically. Um, <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> I uh, did some of that, or my friends did some of that. I, re I remember do my friend doing that with a case of beer at a 7-Eleven, and then yes. the whole thing just split open as he's running, and no. just beer poured everywhere as he's <laughs> going down the street with an empty carton. Yes. <laughs> yes, that has actually happened to me before, for sure. I've done, oh, I, how I, funny. I, I legit had, had done at least 30 of those before this story. Uh, and wow. So, uh, this particular night, my buddy Scott calls and asks me to come out and do a run out and hang and do what we always did. And Scott and I would always uh, fight over the front seat. You know, we, we'd be like, mm. shotgun. D do you, yeah, you, yeah. you used to say that? Shotgun? Oh, uh, heck yeah. yeah oh, yeah. absolutely. So uh, <laughs> this particular night, uh, in, in, intuition kicked in. It's my first time understanding intuition because something mm. said don't go. Every other night mm. I was in that van, that blue Astro yeah. van every other night but this particular night something in me said don't go and i flashed back to that moment when my dad said you know you're a leader and if everybody mm. else is going left and there's something in you that says you need to go right you will do it no matter what and Beautiful. so i said i'm not gonna go and he was like oh you're gonna be a little bitch and i'm like yeah i am tonight i'll see you guys tomorrow we hang up the phone within an hour Every single person in that blue Astro van that I was in the night before that and the night before that was shot and killed. And oh my oh, God. Oh, I take that back. Scott was shot in the head and killed. Everybody in the van was shot. Everyone. Um, wow. But he was shot in the head and he died clearly. Um, and that was a game changer for me because. Wow. Yeah. When you, when you grow up, you know, in a Western culture, you hear all the time. Big boys don't cry and you're, you're sort of beat into submission. And this was the first time I didn't even know. I was so scared for my life. Everything became mm. real at that moment. You know, when you're 15, you think you're invincible. Yeah. But it became real that what we were doing had consequences. And yeah. so, um, you know, shell shocked. I asked my dad, could I leave? And he said, where do you want to go? I said, I don't care. Get me out of California. So uh, he made a few calls. 
a few weeks later, I was on a plane to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I got off the plane. There was a sign with my name on it. This is how like crazy this was because this is before the internet. Um, I get off the plane. There's a sign with my name on it. This woman, Shirley Russell, who was my dad's high school sweetheart, uh, took me in. And Shirley just wow. so happened to live within the county lines of North Allegheny uh, County, which had North Allegheny High School, which was one of the wealthiest schools in Pennsylvania. And so mm. uh, I remember pulling up the first day of school and there was all these BMWs and Mercedes and turf football wow. fields. Everybody was just like, you know, rich. And uh, yeah. and. I remember walking through the hallway and this is, I'm getting to the end of the story or really the beginning of the story. I'm, I'm walking right, through the right, hallway right. and uh, I, I noticed how, you know, in school they have those windows in the classroom so you can look through the door to see who's walking by. Yep. 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 As I was walking by, everybody who saw me would like run and point and be like, Oh, look, look, look. And like, it was like this interesting thing where I was like, what is happening? So I get in the office and the woman starts to check me in and she says, you know, we're talking and she's telling me what class I'm going to be in. And I said, ma'am. And she said, yeah. I said, um, is there anybody else in this school that maybe like, you know, kind of like looks at me, looks like me. And she's like, oh, black. <laughs> no, you're the only black male in the whole school. And uh, Wow. <laughs> you're like, here we go. Yep. I was like, oh, okay. So I went from uh, basically spanish black and filipino school to a all white school in pennsylvania oh, man and i immediately became the most popular kid in school and wow. everybody wanted to hang out with me and funny enough i joined a new gang called wexford mafia which was a bunch of rich white kids <laughs> something and tells me it wasn't as hard <laughs> no, it wasn't but this is this is what changed my life one day we were headed to a party i'm in this kid brad's bmw i'm in the back seat they're playing Outcast, Tupac, and Biggie. Like that was that was the rotation. And this right. particular moment, um, Outcast, the song was called "The Wheels of Steel," and they're passing forty ounces around, and we're drinking, and they're smoking weed. I'm, I don't smoke anymore since eleven because my dad tricked me. Um, but I'm drinking <laughs> these big ass forties, and we're in, I'm in the backseat of this car, and it hits me like a ton of bricks that we're all dealing with the same stuff. And we're all bombarded by the same media. And mm. I realized that, that at my former school, I was acting a certain way and, 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 and getting certain grades. And at this new school, you know, I was, you know, quote unquote, getting better grades and acting a different way. And all of it was based on the expectation and the environment that was set up. And so mm. I realized that the kids at my former school were doing the same exact thing as the kids at this school, but getting two different results. You know, those kids wow. were going to jail and these kids were going to Yale. And for me, wow. this juxtaposition, wow. this understanding that underneath all of our stories, whether it be gay, straight, white, black, Christian, Muslim, Democrat, Republican, whatever you want to say, underneath all of that is our truth. And that truth is love. And that was a mm. moment that shifted and changed everything for me now wow. of course i had a lot of other things happen like i you know i went to college i cheated my way through college and then realized that i was still operating from the wound of the dumb kid because i'm dyslexic or uh, was experiencing dyslexia and mm -hmm. and then got into grad school graduated with straight a's without cheating moved to la got sick became an angry vegan went down the whole conspiracy theory, let go of my religion. Like I have been down a thousand roads and, and <laughs> you went down a lot of rabbit holes. <laughs> it sounds and like because of all of that. Um, in the midst of it, people started saying, you know, Preston's, you know, Preston's like a black Buddha. And, uh, mm. <laughs> and I started coaching people without knowing I was coaching people. And one day I got sick of it and I was like, you know what, if I created a YouTube channel called questions with Preston, I wouldn't have to do all these free sessions. And so I mm -hmm. created this channel and really the rest is history because from that channel, I started receiving messages from people all over the world saying, your videos are touching my heart. What you're saying makes so much sense. I can feel your soul as you speak. And, mm. uh, you know, I, I sort of let it take me, you know, I got the tap on the shoulder and I listened and, uh, here I am now. Beautiful. What a what a fascinating story, man. That's just uh, 
so much inspiration there. Um, and <laughs> let's see. And there's about a million roads we can go down. So I, I went and I was looking at some of the stuff, you know, on your YouTube and some of the videos, that, you know, and some of the topics that you tackle and, um, and address. And, and, you know, so I've, I've kind of just sing, singled out some of them that I feel like would be really beneficial um, to address. And yes. Uh, one of them uh, you had just posted actually, and, and it was it was really good. You were talking about it was a clip. It looked like kind of interview style. You were talking about slow how quickly we're all moving these days. How, how we, you know if we can learn to slow down, yes. the, the universe can work through you. And when you share that story of you know having that realization in high school, it's like you're listening, right? You were really yes. like tapping in and listening to the, the the message that the universe wanted to bring through you, your higher self, or whatever you want to call it. So. So I'd love to hear you speak a little bit about how to get to that that place of, of slowing down and and allowing yourself to align with you know something beyond yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I have a, an understanding that, that the universe cannot play a bigger game until I do. And mm. uh, a lot of times when we think of things like that, we think it's more doing. Right? We get mm-hmm. we get caught up in the doing. And, and we think the more we do, the more we'll have. And when we have these things, then we'll be, the, you know, fill in the blank, yep. free, uh, successful, abundant. And, and for me, it's a, it's a reminder. And all of us have heard this many times, but it's be, do, have, right? So, mm. so yep. the being comes from listening, from slowing down to the speed of wisdom and allowing the universe, God, Buddha, Allah, Krishna, whatever name is most potent for you to speak to through and as you. So for Mm. me, whenever I am experiencing overwhelm, anxiety, breakdown, anything that I don't want to experience in uh, extended amounts of time, I stop Mm -hmm. and I listen. I stop and I listen and I ask powerful questions because when you ask a powerful question, the universe, Google, God has to answer it. So the yeah. problem is that most of us ask disempowering questions until we get disempowering answers back. I ask myself right. questions like, what good is here that I presently cannot see? I ask myself, if my higher self was making this decision, what would he do? Mm. I ask myself, what would love do now right. and now? And now I ask myself, is it true with a capital T? Is that a fact or is this a story that I have, uh, my (coughs) ego has, you know, crafted and concocted to keep me small? Mm. Yeah. And I I think a lot of us forget that we, we, we still are at choice point all the time, all the time, in all ways. And if we slow down and listen, right? Listen until it's charming. Listen until it's punching (laughs) you in the shoulder, right? That's when you move. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a difference, right? Living from that, that state of, you know, uh, I think of, um, Osho, who, who, you know, a lot of controversy around and, you know, recent (laughs) Netflix, Mm -hmm. interesting character because so much wisdom on one hand, then you can see this ego stuff sort of playing out on another. And, um, but he said something that I loved. He said, don't just do something, sit there. And I think that is such a powerful tool that we can all implement. It's like, wait until you are, you know, the, the Holy spirit is moving you till you are motivated to, uh, actually take, take action and for me what's really ser- started to serve me well as the ultimate doer my whole life i'm like learning how to dial it back some and saying okay when am i motivated and in what direction what is my highest excitement okay i'm gonna yes. follow that i'm gonna start turning over rocks oh dead end no problem right this yes. or something better this or something Ooh. better yes. and that is that is really working well for me to just like chill out i have unlimited amount of work on my plate and sometimes i'm like <laughs> what are you doing man and i'm like you know what just do what you can and let's let the rest go and if you follow yes. this trail and it leads nowhere like uh, you can have aims but a, a healthy sense of detachment to them is yes. you know your higher self can see the chessboard in a way you never could so quit trying to figure it all out you know and and trust that flow and i i feel like that is that for me preston has been my biggest theme for this year learning how to move more into a flow state and quit trying to ever force anything. 1000% man. It's a beautiful yeah. thing. And, and I think where, you know, you and I may agree or we may disagree is sometimes 
The flow state is created by what one would deem to be forcing. Meaning, mm. you know, because mm. especially in the spiritual community, we can get like caught up sitting for too long. We can yep, get yep, caught yep. up, you know, thinking that, that, you know, it's just the be. The do and the have mm-hmm. are in there as well. And the do, yeah. um, you know, sometimes, a lot of the times, it's the thing that actually kickstarts. You know, yeah. like, a, like a car that's broken down, you sort of roll yep. it a little bit and then t- try to turn it on. You know, that's what helps yep. the engine get going. And I think a lot of us sit on the sidelines and wait and hope and wish. And that, yeah. you know, my friends, is is a recipe for being broke yep. as hell. And, and <laughs> you know. <laughs> right. Um, you, you see it all the time in our community, right? As someone yeah. who's been on the on the other end of that spectrum, like do 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 do, you know, yeah. I see these people and we we know them and in, in amazing, yeah. beautiful souls. But it it goes, it's all about finding the balance between all these things, right? And they go f- swing so far the other way, where it's just like you mm. know <laughs> that constant uh, in a state of of being. I'm not really doing much of anything except smiling yeah. a lot, which is great. But yeah. if you you know if you want to experience other you know there are there are experiences that are going to come on the other side of your action right 100 percent, man and and here's the thing i don't even have a problem with people swinging to each side of the pendulum because there's you yep. know reason season lifetime my thing is about yep. counterbalancing my thing is about you know asking oneself what am i here for you know like yes. i i did a podcast with with a buddy of mine about encinitas and it stirred up a lot of um uh, controversy a little bit because one of the things I, I was expressing there is that it, you know in Encinitas which is beautiful and it's a spiritual community they're just preaching to the choir like right and, and using these right. you know out there 5d code kind of talk where there's no space for anybody else who's you know yep. looking to you know level their lives up be an example where people can reach you can touch you like and and I get that it's okay for people to disappear into their communities and just, you know, make it about them. I also get that. It was just yeah. me having a human moment and yep. wishing and <laughs> that that we would, you know, make some space for, for those who maybe don't understand what the galactic codes mean. Like, is there a way to <laughs> right. talk to people without using that language? <laughs> right, yeah. totally. I feel you. And, you know, it, it's funny because I talk about this sometimes, uh, Preston. It's like... I really enjoy that kind of talk and those, I know exactly mm-hmm. everyone that you're talking, you know, people who are just so deep down the rabbit hole and they're yeah. living already on some other like, uh, you know, dimension of reality. And, and I can relate and I can feel it yep. and I understand what they're talking about. Maybe some other, they're having experiences that I'm not at times at other times, maybe experiences <laughs> I am having, but I love it. But for me, I feel so called to, you know, be a bridge for the people who are, new on this path yes, who are just yes. waking up giving them very practical real tools to to rewire the, you know their brains in such a way that they're having a transformational experience and, and becoming the next greatest and greatest version of themselves and if you you know you're talking to someone who just sort of started you know left mm. organized religion or stepping or yep. viewing beyond that that particular paradigm you know for the, uh, in, in the last month and you're talking to them about all the 5D light codes that you just downloaded yes. and they're like i'm not really sure what the hell you're talking about yep. i don't know that you're really doing much and so i i, I appreciate that point very much and relate because i really feel called to those people especially it's like yep. you know i want to help as many people over you know and then they can go deep down the rabbit hole later perhaps but yep. um or sooner depending you know everyone's different but uh definitely it, i think a lot of people are you know it's easy to get caught up in especially as our community is forming and getting bigger and there's you know it's like it's 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 its own little bubble and it's funny Uh because i've heard this about encinitas I just spent, uh, I was just at a, in Costa Rica at Envision Festival and yes. you know, there's a superhero mastermind meetup beforehand and there's a lot of Encinitas people there, amazing people. So it's been, it's been coming into my field a lot. I'm only, you know, an hour or so north of there in Orange County, but mm. I haven't really spent much time. But uh, yeah, it, it seems to be uh, a place that, that gets a lot of, uh, a lot of interesting <laughs> attention uh, lately. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's a good spot, man. Like you got good waves. I like surfing, so I, good waves, good cafes, and awesome people. I just, you know, sometimes I get I, my humanness comes out, and I get annoyed. Um, yeah. However, I also know that you know everybody's doing the best they can from where they can with the tools and consciousness they have available. Um, yep. And yep. And I'm aware that there are millions upon millions of people. I heard a stat the other day that 800,000 people commit suicide um, a year. This was from the wow. UN. And that's more than any of the wars that are happening in the world right now combined. That's more than all kinds. There was like 10 stats that it was bigger than. And for me, wow. this is a reminder of, of the deep suffering that, it, that some people on our planet are experiencing. And those who are way showers, those of us who have received the tap and, and uh, gotten the call, I think it's our job, our duty to hold yeah. space in such a way that, that we become a beacon and a light for them to say, oh, I see. I see what's possible. I don't necessarily need to be a super religious person in order to experience the goodness, the beauty, the light, the love that this world has to offer. Oh, I see. There is space for me on this planet. I matter. My voice matters. Who I am matters. Right? So, mm. so yeah, man. I feel I think, that, man. I feel, I mean, you even used my name means beacon on a hill. So I mm. definitely resonate with that. And, mm. and you know, what's great is the, the, the ROI, the ripple of impact of the people that are hearing this and are, are so motivated. It's like we all have this this light code, right? It's like yes. there for everyone to tap into. Yes. And and whether you're influencing one person or a billion people, you never know the, the ripple of impact of that. And so, you know, it's I think it's so important for, for everyone to start their day in a way it's like, okay, if I'm going to I'm going to leave everyone I found yeah, I, I run across, I bump up against, I'm going to leave them better than I found them in some way with yes. the, the love that's emanating from my being. And you actually talk about your, uh, I, somewhere I saw you talking about a ritual where you wake up and you go out over everything you love about yourself. Mm -hmm. And that I thought was such a powerful uh, way to start your day because it all stems from that, right? Yes. It, you, you can't give away what you don't have. And so, yes. yeah, I'd love to hear, hear you, you know, how, how you go about that exactly. Yeah, man. Uh, now that I have a child, which uh, I'm so blessed where he has me and my wife, um, <laughs> I don't do it aloud anymore uh, as much, mm -hmm. but um, essentially the moment I am, I, I can cognize that I am a human in, in this, you know, dimension, I begin to do, go through a series of just stream of consciousness gratitude for everything that I can cognize at that moment. I don't try mm. to censor it. Sometimes it's like, oh, thank you for my boogers. Thank you for, you know, like, thank you for farts. <laughs> thank you for hair. Thank you for my balls. Oh, I love my balls. Thank you. Like, I will literally say anything that comes up for me and give gratitude. That's so for good. And, so good. And it puts me in a state, you know, and, and you know, as you, un we all understand, you know, we are vibrational beings. And so, mm. you know, by, by usually 9 a.m. in the morning, I have already done at least five things to fill my cup. So, mm. you know, my overflow is pretty gangster, you know, because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm taking care of me. I'm filling my right. cup. I go surfing. I go on walks with my son every morning, uh, which wow. is in nature on the beach. You know, I beautiful. put some green juice or some beautiful, you know, uh, smoothie in my body. I'm stream conscious gratitude. I'm listening to some type of uh, audio book on that walk with my son mm. that, you mm. know, is supportive to, you know, feeding my intellectual prowess and all that good stuff. And, you know, I, wow. I suggest that anybody who has their phone, first of all, if your phone wow. is next to your bed, put it on airplane mode. Second of all, if your phone throughout the entire day now, and I speak, I speak about this and we talked about this before we hopped on about how a lot of people in the spiritual community are broke as hell. And yeah. I noticed that and recognized that I had a money story and it was in my way. And the more that I let that story win, the less I was of service to the planet. And so yeah. and at the end of 2016, I said, I'm dedicating 2017 to really stepping up and stepping in as far as this money and, and abundance game goes, because I know the universe mm. is sufficient. 
And, yep. you know, we went to do our taxes at the, at the end of 2017 and we hit $1.3 million in a year. Wow. That's I beautiful. Like quadrupled my income in one year just based mm. on uh, paying attention, right? Intention mm. and mm. attention, right? Mm. Plus a line committed action will always produce results. Mm. I didn't say good results. I didn't say bad. They will always produce results. What we put our int- in attention and intention plus aligned, committed action will always produce results. And that is exactly mm. what I did. And that's what we did as a couple. And we produced. And wow. because of that production and because of those results, I now can serve at a bigger scale. Right? Yeah. Now. Yeah. Um, freak. Where was I going with this? I was just saying something about the morning routine and about... Mm. Yeah, and you you kind of took it into um, you know how yeah. how the whole money things started to play in to that, and how you know it it's helped you to reach yes. more and more people now. So so basically, my my call to action for anybody, especially anybody in our community, is to is to put an intention around walking towards the stuff stuff you're most afraid of. You know, mm. like like for I, me, yeah. 2018 is sex, right? Because sex is so yeah. taboo. It's, it's something we all kind of pretend like it's not happening. And, and meanwhile, you know, millions of guys are going through straight up depression because of their porn addiction. And, yeah. you know, that that doesn't come out of nowhere. It, it's, it's, it's societal. And when we heal yeah. it in ourselves, we heal it for everyone else. So find the thing that you're afraid of and walk towards it. Because the more abundant yeah. you are, the more... Um, of service you can be to the planet, you know, when you're broke and out of touch with, with, you know, who and what you are in that aspect of yourself, you become a burden, not just to yourself, but to your friends, your family and society. Why? Because if you got sick, if something happened, what what are you going to do? And we live in an abundant universe. Nine out of 10, most of the people listening to this are Caucasian humans who are good looking, well-spoken and can fucking make a way out of no way. Like none of us right. are in the middle of Africa or India where there is no food or water. So there's no right. excuses. Step the fuck right. up, everybody. This is like, this is, have this be your permission. And I'm not saying this from a mean place. I know I just use curse words, but like, let it know. <laughs> it's game mm-hmm. time. If not yeah. now, then when? Like real talk. Mm. We need mm-hmm. you. So stop mm-hmm. shying away from money and telling stories about money because money hears you. Mm-hmm. There is abundance and we all pay for all kinds of stuff. I paid for this computer. We paid for the phone. We paid for the headphones we're using right now. You paid for the phone you're listening to this podcast from. We pay all yeah. the time. So stop making your Reiki and your healing something that it has to be free. Like you have to pay your damn bills as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, dude, I love this. It's like you're you are uh, you're you're definitely hitting the nail on the head. It's like your everything lies on the other side of your fears. You're mm-hmm. you're you know it's your path if you're scared of it in some way, yep. shape, or form. I think yes. so. It's like and and there's so much fear around uh, stepping out and claiming your voice and am I good enough and all these stories it's like you are so much more than enough it's ridiculous yes. Yes, like yes, yes. and and you are so abundant I mean not only here's the truth of the matter uh, in this of the situation in which you find yourself as you listen to this literally you are one with the source that not only created the abundance in your in your neighborhood, in your city, yes. in your state, in your country, in your on this planet yes. that is just so infinitely abundant. We've abused the hell out of it and still producing incredible amounts of abundance. But you're the one with this source that it created the abundance that is this entire cosmos and yes. beyond 3D reality. That <laughs> is you. It's like, and you're worried about like, can I do it? it, it can I call it in? It's like, it, it's, it, you know, I, I heard it said one time and 
and I'm kind of paraphrasing it, but when when you come holding out your bag to be filled with sugar, it will be examined to see how large it is. And mm. that's exactly what you did in that, what was it, 2016, I think you said. Yeah. It, you, you said, you know what? Mm, I think I have a bigger bag now. I've yeah. decided I'm yes. going to just have a bigger bag. And that's yes. all any of us really, it's making that choice and telling those new stories. And I love the way you put it. You're Reiki. Like you are doing energy work with your, yes. with your, with your thoughts, with your beliefs. And it's... It's everything, and it's time for us all, all of us who are resonating anywhere in the vicinity of this information. If you're tuning into this podcast, you are here to help take this thing to the next level, and we mm. need you more than ever. Yes, yes, yes. All kinds of yes. <laughs> <laughs> all kinds. All the yeses. Yes. Backwards, forwards, and up and down. All right. Well, now seems like a good moment to take a quick minute to tell those of you who aren't familiar a bit about our sponsor, Gaia. I've been a big fan of Gaia for many years now, which is why they're the only content provider I've ever reached out to in regards to potentially supporting this podcast. So needless to say, I'm very excited they're now supporting the show. Gaia truly is my personal go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web. They have an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. Just to give you an example, on the show Missing Links, the incredible researcher Greg Braden explores all the biggest questions concerning who we are, where we come from, where we're going, by connecting the missing links between science and spirituality to complete our understanding of humanity's history and to better understand the interconnectedness of all things. Awesome, right? And that's just one example. As you guys constantly hear me say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to go deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place I know of to do it, period. And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. So you wrote a book too, right? Uh, Love Louder. What I, ha- I have an idea what that's about now, just from connecting with you. <laughs> but maybe you can share a little insight. Yeah, Love Louder is thirty-three ways to amplify your life. Uh, it's it's with an understanding that when we amplify our love, we automatically amplify our lives. And so I took thirty-three different topics, subjects uh, that were near and dear to my heart, and wrote them in a way in which you know. Um, if your grandmother picked up the book, she could understand it, but it, it would have esoteric and dropped in wisdom um, within it. And then there is cool. assignments, love louder challenges, uh, because, mm. you know, um, it, we, all of us can find information on the Internet. The game is to step into mastery. The game is to be embodied. And so uh, I wrote the book in a way in which uh, there are challenges for uh each person to do at the end of each chapter and there are 33 Mm. chapters each of this really small book not really small but small enough to where you could read it in you know three or four days but i suggest you take one chapter and work on that one thing for a week and then come Mm. back do the next chapter and that whole thing for a week and then you do it at least three to four times Um, that's what i do i read the same books i've read conversations with god all of them like 150 mm. times. Oh, they're like, they're the top, top favorites yes. of mine too. So, so good. You know, there's a book uh, called 10X by this guy named Grant Cardone. He'll trigger the hell out of you. I highly suggest <laughs> you get that book. It's, he's oh, interesting. Like, Haven't heard yeah. of that one. Oh my goodness. Um, and then there's a book called The One Thing, which is like my Bible. Um, mm. I use that for business. I use that for relationship. I use it for everything. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, I think I've heard of that one, but I haven't read it. Mm-hmm. It's pretty, pretty amazing for sure. Um, but the point being is like, you know, someone took the same situation that you are in right now. And I'm talking to you, whoever's listening to this podcast, somebody took the same situation, those same lemons and made strawberry lemonade, the mm. same stuff you're complaining about. They went and made, you know, fruit punch. And so <laughs> you can you, you can continue to complain and be a victim to the government and Trump and, you know, your cousin, your mom, your dad, your brother, whatever. Or you can you can ask yourself, where have I not been willing to go within my own consciousness and then run straight towards that mm. and see what you're made of 
You see, all of this, this physical stuff, the material stuff, as we all know, we can't take it with us. But the beauty is, is who you become on the way to it. I already yeah. had enough money. It was about who I had to become in order to beat that money story. I already was yeah. abundant. I'm, I, you know, like how much is enough? You got to ask yourself that as well. You know, for some yeah. people, it's $100,000. For some people, it's $100 million. Yeah. It's, it's not that for me, but it's somewhere in between. And so right, whatever, right. Whatever, whatever that is, once you figure that out, whatever's calling you forward, whatever's, you know, handwritten on your soul, it's your duty mm. to see who you become on the way to that. Because, yeah. you know, I, I tell people all the time, success is not simultaneous. It's sequential. Right. It's it's mm. it's this, the right steps at the right time. And a lot of us right. spend a lot of time doing stupid stuff. We scroll and scroll and scroll and <laughs> uh, distract and do clean our closets and do all kinds of other stuff outside of the one thing, the one or two things that actually moves the needle in your business, in your life, in your relationship. And right. so the challenge is, is to move into that, you know, yeah. with all that love on your heart, with all of yeah. that harmony, with all of that, you know, 5D consciousness. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. I, I love that. And it is, there's so many distractions coming at you and there's so many ways for you to sort of, uh, tune out, uh, if you will. And, and sort of, you know, sit, go here. It's like, come over here, come to the sidelines, come watch me play the game, <laughs> yes. right? Come yes. on. It's Sunday. Don't you want to watch me play the big game? It's like, nah, <laughs> I think I want to play a game like, yep. and, and that's something that you've obviously, uh, embodied, which is how important important play is right yes. i often the, the one bible quote i i quote regularly is you know lest you become like a child you can't enter the kingdom of heaven and i think yes. what was meant by that is this embracing that inner child your life is meant to be joyous it's meant to be a celebration it's not meant to be all, yes there's lessons yes there's some pain yes but the the theme is like you did this to to ultimately have fun at, while doing it and yes. bring a sense of levity to it and sure. you have certainly embodied that and and you know i'd love to that's my 10 cents on it i'd love to hear hear your thoughts well, that was more than 10 cents that was a hundred that was, that was, that <laughs> i got was a, a full a full bill <laughs> yeah, yeah that was beautiful and uh, you know i couldn't say it better myself man you know I, I that's one of the things in 20 into 2014 2015 i dedicated my year to play to mm. to filling my cup and giving from the overflow to to becoming more childlike um and you know with an understanding that you know we only attract what we are not what we want yeah and so ah. I, I made it my mission to, to step into that joy, into that play and stop taking life so damn serious. I think especially in the spiritual community, we can get caught up and get on our high horses and think that we're, you know, somehow elitist or better or whatever the case may be. And life is so serious and there's so much suffering. And yes, there is so much suffering, but we don't help anybody suffering by feeling that pain or that suffering. Right. Mm, I, right. I have compassion. And yep. I experience empathy, but I also know how to redirect that. I keep my conversation and my vibration high, and I see people in their low, and I invite them upstairs, not me downstairs. And a mm. lot of us think that we got to go downstairs to get them. Nope. Mm. You stay high. Yeah. I think it was Einstein yeah. that said, uh, when you raise your level of consciousness, everything around you must come with you or fall off. And, and mm. sometimes the best thing you could ever do for a friend or a family member is to let them fall off. Right. Mm. I, I remind myself all the time, accept what is, let go of what was, have faith in what will be and be here now. Accept mm. what is, let go of what was, have faith in what will be and be here now. Mm. Oof, back to the now. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, that's powerful stuff, man. And, <laughs> you, you know, one of the things that is you know, constantly happening is comparison. You mm, know, people mm. are hearing you right now. They're like, all right, this guy's like, you know, uh, I don't know. He's like, you know, <laughs> they're going to remember him in a, in a thousand years. Listen to how <laughs> inspirational and motivational and like 
captain and I yeah. can't do that. I'm yep. not that. So mm. it's easy for him. Look, it just, you know, it's, it's, what'd you say? Written on your soul. It's written yes. on his soul. You know, it's like, but here's the thing that people don't understand. First of all, there is no comparison. You're a unique emanation of source. And as you change your thoughts, you change what you can even rewrite those things yes. that maybe are on your soul and, yes. and upgrade. You're meant to upgrade during the process, right? Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, man. I, I, I remind myself quite a bit and I'm going to remind you guys that it's not the happy people that are grateful. It's the grateful people that are happy. And when we yes. remember that, uh, you know, an attitude of gratitude creates space. The comparison comes when, we, when, we, when we're not actually grateful for what we do have. You know, yeah. when, we, when we're not looking with the eye behind the eye. You know, we're looking with, with the material eye. But there's, a, there's another eye, as we all know. And that chakra, when that chakra is open and we're actually uh, allowing the universe to speak to, through and as us, we become overwhelmingly grateful. I'm not sure if uh, you've ever done molly or mushrooms or uh, LSD or anything of that nature. I have. Um, and, I definitely have. <laughs> <laughs> and that experience, you know, let's say when, when the molly like drops in and you're like, Oh goodness gracious. There is <laughs> my heart life. chakra just got yeah, blasted open. Yes. 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 <laughs> that, that I have found and continue to find yesterday. I freaking burst into tears. I was looking at my, my child. It's like how, mm -hmm. how much abundance I'm living mm -hmm. with and as right. You see, um, there's so much here. And so we can, I don't even do, I don't entertain comparison for very long. Does it come mm. up for me? Absolutely. And then sure. I quickly remember that I serve a God that made no mistakes, not one. And, mm. and, and if I'm here, that means I'm intended here. Just mm. like every tree, every leaf, every wave that crashes on the shore. If I am here, I am intended here. I am yeah. a, on purpose with a purpose, many purposes with an S. Yeah. And right now, one of those purposes is to be present to the presence. Mm. Oof. God, yeah. here now, in this now yeah. moment, there is only love. There is only peace. There is only harmony. There is only beauty. In this now moment, there is an aspect of each and every one of us that has never been hurt, harmed, or endangered. In this now moment, we mm. can tap back into touch, feel, experience, emanate, reflect God's love. Mm. And so it is. Yeah. <laughs> Go Preston. It's your birthday. <laughs> Every moment is your birthday. You're born anew, right? Mm -hmm. And one mm -hmm. of the, one of the things that is, uh, been coming up for me, uh, with this whole comparison thing is it, 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 it kind of came to me relatively recently a few months back and it's like, okay, hold on this comparison thing. It gets a lot of people. And mm -hmm. what I realized is if you and I out of 7 billion people are connecting, yes. right? It's like hitting the lotto a hundred times in a row or whatever. Yes. Statistically, it's like pretty unlikely. Um, and the reason we're connecting, the reason someone is listening to this broadcast right now and hearing these words is because out of all the infinite possibilities uh, in, in vibrational offerings on the planet, they're close enough uh, a reflection that this is uh, coming into their field, right? Yes. And so what I like to say with the whole comparison thing is instead of saying, hmm, look at them and look at how they're different, when you come from a place of, of, of oneness instead of separation, you say, wow, out of all the possibilities, yep. I, this has vibrated into my field and is, is, is you know, reflecting back to me because it is such a close match to who and what I am. It's a part yes. of me that's so super close that I'm seeing it. So now instead of, oh man, I'll never be like him. It's like, oh, hold on. Actually, I'm so much like him at some level that he's showing up in my field at this moment. Yes, yes, yes. 100, 100, 100. <laughs> <laughs> so that one, I, I think that really helps to like turn it in a different direction and uh, has, has been serving me well. And I, I think it resonates, man. I love it. And it's a, uh, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful path, man. Isn't it so amazing to just have these? And I know the listeners are having it. I know without even asking you're having it where it's just like, 
uh, you know, light bulb realization, deeper clarification, yes. deeper uh, understanding of, you know, what the heck is going on here. Yes. It's yes. so yes. inspiring. Yes. Ah, yep. <laughs> Inspiration, <laughs> right? In spirit. And, yes. uh, you know, now you said, you said another quote that I want to, I want to dive into a little bit that jumped out at me. Forgiveness is an act of self-love. And there's a lot of people who have a lot of, um, you know, there's, we've all experienced pain and trauma at different levels, right? And there's some yes. pretty traumatic things that have happened to people who are out there listening and 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 i can't claim to even know what some of that must feel like because i haven't been through it or you haven't been through it Uh and it's um but you know forgiveness it's like i love that quote because it is so true it's like it is when you understand what you said a little bit earlier like god source your higher self whatever you want to call it it is it is perfect it's never made a mistake i I talk about that and that's kind of a controversial statement and i say Mm -hmm. it all the time And, and it's like i don't believe there's ever been a mistake it's all happening perfectly for everyone it's it's come it's happening through you and for you to become it and lead to the next greatest and greatest version of yourself and that's why when you when you Im- implement that perspective forgiveness is you know it's it's happening for you not to yes. you right yes forgiveness is and it, the thing to understand about forgiveness is we don't forgiveness doesn't excuse what happened right. it prevents what happened from destroying your heart mm. that's the, that's the difference yes. and i yes. think that a lot of us don't understand what happens when we, you know, it would be like turning on a stove and then putting your hand on that stove and holding it there. That's what, that's what forgive. That's what it looks like when we don't forgive. We just keep burning mm. ourselves. We just keep yeah. burning ourselves. And so yeah. we forgive so that we, we, we clear up our energetic real estate. We forgive because we understand that everybody's doing the best they can with the tools and consciousness they have available. Even if what they did may be deemed unforgivable. There's always space, always room to open one's heart and understand and get, here's the thing, all of us have been through at least 10 things right now. We could all name, take a piece of paper and list 10 things that we've been through that in the moment we thought was the, was the worst thing ever. Worst breakup, worst mm-hmm. whatever, right? Yep. I'll never recover from this. And then we can also list right next to that and dash that paper and say, I got this lesson, I met that person, I would have never been here if that wouldn't have happened. So we can all find the gratitude and the perfectness in that moment. You know, I was in New York and I'm going to end with this story, if you wouldn't mind. Um, Sure. I was in New York and I got an intuitive hit. Um, I was with a friend and I got an intuitive hit to go get these boots that I wanted from Barney's at a particular time. It was like, go now. I was like, really? Mm. Now we're, we're at a cafe. We're talking. It was like, now. So I get up, I go, I make it to the train. The train pulls off as I get there. I'm like, damn it. Now I got to wait another 15 minutes for this train to come around. I get on the train. I'm just listening, paying attention, smiling, being with one with the presence. I get off the train. I look at my navigation system and it tells me to go a particular way. I go that way. I find out I'm going the wrong way. So I turn around, I go back, I finally make it into Barney's, I go upstairs, I get to the third floor, I take one lap around, and intuitively, I get a hit that says, go downstairs now. So I'm like, yo, I haven't even bought the boots, like, it's like, now. Mm -hmm. I walk downstairs, I open the door, I turn left, I take five steps, I hear, no, Scott, boom. I look to my right, there is a woman flying through the air. Wow. She lands on her head and the back of her brain start to splatter out and blood Whoa. is everywhere. And Whoa. I instantly knew why I was there. And so uh, it was a gory scene. It was the day before Mother's Day. Her name is Amelia Sturrental. You can look this up on the internet right now. Um, I ran straight towards her, right in. Everybody else turned their heads, walked away. It's Mother's Day. Nobody wants to see blood and brains all over the ground. Mm. A doctor and a nurse just so happened to be on the scene. They both ran to her. So now there's three of us. I'm down at her feet, holding her feet, praying. I go into a meditative prayer state and talk to her. Mm. And I say, ma'am, I don't know you, but I know you. 
And if it's time mm-hmm. for you to go, I completely understand, but I want you to know that you are not alone. I am here with you in this process. Wow. The whole time I, I'm, I'm like, uh, I can hear little snippets. Ma'am, are you there? Excuse me, ma'am. Can you hear us? Right. I can hear the ambulance starting to come. About five minutes goes by. I'm still going there. At one point, I get the intuitive hit. Open your eyes, Preston. I open my eyes. She's gurgling blood this whole time. I open my eyes. She takes a breath. <gasps> Doesn't take another one. This, for me, was one of those moments. And I had PTSD for a long time. It still comes up for me when I see taxi cabs and cars coming fast. This, for me, was a very, very heavy thing to hold at first. And every day that goes, I don't forget. I know, I can tell you that story. I can, in vividly, I hugged the cab driver for 20 minutes after as he cried and told me he's never hit anybody. He told me, I've driven this cab for 17 years. I've never hit anybody. I'm going to lose my job, my family. I hurt that woman. He's crying in my arms. I knew why I was there. And yet it was heavy and scary and gory. And I woke up with nightmares in the middle of the night. And so, you know, you, you may not have a story like that, but you, it, it may be worse. It may be less, whatever it is, you know, it, we, we get tapped on the shoulder because that's what we're here for. That was a part of my purpose. Yeah. And, and now Amelia's stir rental story lives on. And so I speak on stages Boring. all over the world. I lead a, a group called Man Cave, which is a conscious man brotherhood. My wife and I do workshops all over the world somatic tra- tra- um, somatic experiencing and trauma workshops where we dive deep into experiential work and clear energetic patterns and things that have been trapped in the body. And all of that, I can only do that because of the stuff I've been through, because of the stuff I subconsciously chose on some level to be a part of. Yeah. Wow, man, that is quite the story and you know it, it's one of those things I, i've had i've had experiences before never that led to uh something so powerful as to help someone cross and to give you that experience and to uh now now give us the experience right um yeah. but listen learning to listening to listen to those taps when it's yes. you know you i mean a lot of people be like what I'm, I'm not you know they wouldn't even hear the tap much less follow it and yeah. that's the thing as you become more sensitive it's it's there waiting for all of us to to hear the tap to not get in the astro van to hear the tap to go yep. to get the shoes at that time so that you can have an experience that's going to serve your own growth help another or help you know millions perhaps right yeah. by yep. by hearing this and in feeling the experience and in wow that's such a powerful share and you know, I have no doubt, Preston, that you are going to continue to touch um, countless lives. And it's just an honor and a privilege to connect with you. And, you know, you mentioned your your programs. Uh, you have a, you have a few, right, that you offer Man Cave. Uh, you yes. have a, a bridge experience. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about those, how people can connect. And also, you know, you being gracious enough to offer people a, you know, a, a very generous discount if they should ever feel called to, to you know, share in those experiences. So Man Cave is a conscious man brotherhood, a virtual conscious man brotherhood that is a rites of passage. It is a four month journey with men from all over the world where we we go through some of the most beautiful and heaviest stuff um, in an attempt to clean and clear the palate and the plate. Man Cave, uh, we go into, you know, breaking up with your parents. We go into what it looks like to truly own your king and your warrior and your lover. We go into um, subjects of money and business and how to keep those things. And we, it's a brotherhood and it's a brotherhood for life. So um, if any men here or women who have husbands or boyfriends or sons uh, who would be interested, you would go to PrestonSmiles.com forward slash man cave. And I have a hundred and fifty dollar discount for uh, the positive head crew. So it's positive head 150 positive head 150 is a coupon code is a coupon code. Um, Wow, that's very generous. 
Absolutely. And then, yes, my wife and I lead workshops. Uh, this uh, June, we'll be uh, doing LA and then we'll go to London and then Toronto and then um, come to Burning Man, then go to Australia for two months. So uh, if you can make any of those dates, it's bridgeexperience.com. Bridgeexperience.com. That this, is tra- this is trauma work. This is experiential work. This is somatic experiencing, which is tapping into the wisdom of the body and, and learning how to be with it. This is not a workshop where you come and take a bunch of head notes. This is a workshop where we rip your guts open and see what's there huh. and do heart surgery and put you back together. You put you back together in a way in which creates uh, you create abundance in your life. Um, so, mm. and, and we have uh, $100 off, positive head, 100. So uh, I just appreciate... Uh, you, uh, B, and the whole crew, and everybody who have been gracious enough to listen uh, to this beautiful conversation. Well, those are both uh, such generous, generous offers for anyone who feels called to 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 participate. So once again, guys, just PrestonSmiles.com, uh, you know, forward slash man cave. Use the coupon code POSITIVEHEAD150. BridgeExperience.com. Use the uh, code POSITIVEHEAD100. And um, yeah, Preston, man, you're such an inspiration. Uh, you truly are in spirit and it's coming through you. It's oozing out of every pore and it's such a, I'm, I'm so fired up for my day and, and really, really just honor and appreciate the work that you're doing. And uh, I look forward to connecting with you uh, in 3D uh, at some point. Uh, I'm sure it's not if, but when. And uh, I definitely look forward to, to uh, getting to share some FaceTime. 100% my man much love and uh, I, I truly appreciate the, the the commitment to to getting the word out and and not just the word but the love out because I can feel it from mm. you and from your your audience and and what you're doing on this planet mm. I do have one last question for you uh, and it's it's my go-to ending question 60 seconds or less what is the meaning of life according to Preston Smiles Love, 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 love <laughs> to experience the fullness of what it means to embody love. Uh-ho. Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, thank you, Preston. Love you, my friend. And until next time, journey well. Well, everyone, that concludes this week's interview episode. If you have enjoyed this positive download from our hearts and minds to yours, please take a minute, give us a rating or review on iTunes, since iTunes is the holy grail of all things podcasting. Uh, Your good reviews help us to reach more listeners. Also, we would be extremely appreciative if you would tell your friends and family about the show. Our sincere intent with the Positive Head podcast is to spread positivity to the world, Because, well, because we're selfish, quite honestly. Uh, I say that jokingly, but really only halfway joking. I'm referring to the good kind of selfish based on the knowing that we all get what we give in this life. Because when we give, we're actually always giving to extensions of self since we're all really one in the same consciousness, just in different bodies. So if you want to be a good selfish along with us by helping to spread the positivity, By all means, please proceed to shout about the Positive Head podcast from your rooftop. (laughs) Otherwise, as you continue on your fabulous journey in this 3D reality, be sure to remember this. As long as you ain't dead, you're already positive ahead. Journey well, everyone, and thank you for being.